のでねもしあの実演終わ,終わりましたら中の方をお進みいただきますといろいろ体験も行いますのでねそちらの方も行ってみてください蓋を開けるなんてとても繊細な動きですよね、so、here, the, 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 hi, so who are you? Hi, I'm the managing director of the Shadow Robot Company We're one of the three companies that have come together to build this tactile teddy robot So, this is your So, I'm from Shadow and we build the hands that are part of this robot. Then, Mike there is from Haptex and they are making the gloves that are measuring his hand movements. So, we measure the movements of his hand and copy them across to the robot hand. How good are your hands? Are... So, the Shadow hand is as close as we can get to a human hand at the moment. Let's, let's, let's jump over there. So, as close as you can get? As the shadow hand is as close as we can get to building a human-like hand. We have the same movements in each joint, we have the same size and range of movements, we have sensing to give us a sense of touch from Syntouch, and we have joint and position sensors and force sensors so we know how, where we are and how hard we're working. And what's on the tips of the fingers? Some gripping kind so of material? The tips of the fingers here are a sensor from a company called Syntouch. This is the Biotech. The Biotech actually gives the robot a sense of touch that's like your sense of touch. It can feel vibration, it can feel pressure, it can sense temperature. Do you also do the one he's wearing, where there's all this uh, sensor in his hand? So the sensor on his hands is the glove from Haptex. So an American company, and they make an amazing glove that measures your hands, and it provides you with the feedback for what's happening to the robot. So you can feel what the robot's feeling. Nice. Haptics. So um, is this going to be useful for, um, let's say, uh, when you send in the robot in a, in a nuclear plant where there's some kind of issue or on the move? On, on the moon. The first, place, the first place we're looking at for this is putting it into dangerous, difficult, dirty places. Places where you currently have to send a person, but you don't want to. And instead you could use this kind of technology on a robot, a mobile platform, or a fixed platform, to do a task that currently a human does at risk. Nice. What's the latency? Very low. Very low. Uh, when we did an experiment where we had the robot in London and the gloves in San Francisco, we had about 160 milliseconds round trip. And that's okay to do what you want? That's fine for touch. Because you can you because the touch is so fast, you can feel the thing before you can see it. So this is a quite an attention grabbing uh, area here. It's been great being here. We've we've seen lots and lots of people, they've really got what we're doing, they've really understood where we're trying to go. Hey. Can you explain some more? Um, how fast does it move around? So this system is designed to move at about the speed of a human, but not a human really in a hurry. It's just a kind of it's a sensible safe movement. You can think of a robot that would move very fast, but that would be dangerous. So this is designed to allow you. Give me five. Hey, that was that was cool. <laughs> shake hands. Yeah, shake hands. Oh, thanks. My hand still uh, is still fine after the shaking. My hand is still okay. Yeah. Cool. You don't. You don't. If we you don't do the finger shake. shake. No. <laughs> no. Okay. Yeah. When I touch these, you feel that? Yeah. Oh, like well. uh, here. Uh. Nice. Yeah. Nice. There's a lot of potential here for, um, let's say, uh, long distance uh, interactions. Long distance interactions, space, nuclear. We were seeing people interested in using it in laboratories where they're dealing with hazardous materials, chemicals. But also, in time, we'll see this technology being used in social contexts. You'll go somewhere by robot, you'll be able to connect to the robot, you'll be able to be in a distant place to engage with people who are there. How long time does it take to uh, get uh, become a master on this thing? Oops. Really quick to learn to use it. Basically, you put the gloves on, it's already doing what you expect it to do because it's measuring your movements and making the robot do. You have to get used to the kind of the speed and the flow, but we've been having people pick up in five, ten minutes 
and just walk in and be able to do tasks with it. Do you have many of these uh, set up and uh, deployed? Or what's your, what's your this is, status? This is the first time we brought together a system like this. So th time. this is basically the public release of this system. It's never been shown in like another country yet. We took it. We took a, an earlier version to the Amazon Remars conference earlier this year. You might have seen some pictures of Jeff Bezos with a pair of robot hands. That was the previous version of this. But this whole system working as it is today, this is a first. Nice. Uh, let's, can we walk just for a couple of minutes over here? Um, what booth are we at right now? So this is the uh, Anna Avatar In booth. Anna, the airline, are branching out. So they've seen that their job as an airline is to get people from one place to another. But why do you have to travel? If you can use an avatar, you can be somewhere else straight away. You can shake hands. The most important thing is to shake hands with the business partner. To meet people. You could do that remotely hands. now. But to, to meet your family, to be with your friends, hell, even to go fishing. Let's walk around here. Um, hey. Sorry. Hey. So what's she uh, doing right now? So this avatar robot, somebody is here. This is a person. They're sitting in the back. Of is this a person somewhere else? They're down the back over there, and she's bringing them around and showing them around the booth. So you could just have the rest of the body in your hands connected yeah. to this, or even just this. If you just want to go somewhere and enjoy it, you can see what the person is seeing as they go around and do it and interact with people around. Have some other robots that move around a little bit. So, so we have your. The, the classic telepresence robot. Which is classic but very effective. Very, very effective. It's really simple. Hey. It's really effective. How are you? Are you in the next room over there? Or are you like far away? Ah, right there. <laughs> cool. So this is cool. Uh, what's happening in this corner? So these guys are controlling the, the body worn avatars that we saw a moment ago. Oh. So you can see these they've got guys. the headsets on, and these are the people who are seeing through the eyes of those robots. Nice. And that's, I think, the best way to do VR is to transport yourself to another place in real exactly. time. Exactly. So let's go and just then, around this corner here. The people are queuing up for a demo. So th this is still the, the, cra the simple, craziest idea. Yeah, can you go there? Yeah. This is, to, to me, the, the craziest of all the ideas. This is fishing remotely. Let's go as close so to this. this yeah. So this is an automated. Uh, this is a tele fishing rod. Tele fishing Over because in, people take the airplane the, to go fishing. Where is the fishing? Uh, Oita Prefecture. It's now the Oita Prefecture. Heavy lane. So I'm afraid. Uh, uh, sorry, uh, I cannot. Uh, no, no, no. Sure. Sure. Okay. Because it's just, just a lot of lane. No problem. Uh, weather, sorry, yes. sorry. So where is the lake? Where uh, is the fishing lake? Maybe the. Where is the fishing lake? Where? 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 The location? Uh, Oita, Oita Prefecture. Prefecture. Oita Prefecture. Yeah. So the fishing lake there, they have a robot system with a fishing rod. Oh! And you, you sit here with, real and you fishing. control the fishing rod and you catch a fish. Yesterday Whoa. I saw a man catch a fish the other side of Japan. How much it costs to catch one fish? How much? Is there a price? <laughs> Sorry. How much? How much? I, I don't know. <laughs> no? <laughs> Sorry. He doesn't do right. the commercial side. <laughs> right. That's cool. I think people... Yeah. Uh, some people say that it's important to get off meat, and, and so maybe you, if you get them to actually kill the meat, they will, I'm joking. Uh, no, no, okay. fair enough. Remotely. But, but just doing, it's, it's an example of being able to take time out of your life and do something that normally would take a long, long time to do. You'd have to travel, you'd have to be in the right place, and now you can just go, ah, we'll just use the fishing line. Yeah, the CEO at the, the office else. can go fish in a corner for five minutes. And so can the secretary. Nice. Yeah. It's right here. Oops. Sorry. I'm sorry. sorry, sorry. I'm sorry. Well, we will deliver by air. This is another cool-looking robot. So this robot So it's a forest-walking robot. It can walk through the countryside. It can travel around. Now that obviously I can go and walk in the forest, but what if I can't? What if I'm stuck at home? What if I can't leave the house? I can't leave the kids? Or I, I, I'm physically unable to leave. This just means it's possible for anybody to go and wander around in a nice place and enjoy the distant location. Could you add your hands here? That's some of the technology we're talking Maybe about. you could add so your hands. Add better capability. Well, if you go for a walk, you may not need it. But for the future systems, yes, you'd add robot hands like ours. You'd make it possible to, to interact with things when you're out and about. Nice. So, um, uh, 
Um, it's kind of like the highlight of, of the Seattle, no? Because this is like the robot conference and you're showing the most cutting edge robots. This is the most amazing cutting edge robotic technology. And I love the fact it's being shown by an airline who have seen the potential to, to create a new market, to create a new space for themselves. So when you say Jeff Bezos used your gloves, or maybe. Hey, uh, Jeff Bezos, yeah. So, yeah, so uh, sometimes, I mean, for example, I saw two, three, four years ago, or five years ago, Google invested in Boston Dynamics and all kinds yeah. of stuff, yeah. but they didn't really go through with it. They kind of like gave up. Isn't it like um, There's a long the time for there. some of the big guys to just go serious into these things and well, just make it happen? But this is what SoftBank Robotics have done. So Boston Dynamics, who you alluded to there, are now part of SoftBank. And what they've done is they've taken those robots that we all saw the crazy parkour videos of, and they've turned them into an actual system that you can deploy, you can buy, you can have a four-legged robot running around in your factory, in your office, in your construction. So mass site. production? Into mass production, it does, yes. Whoa, cool. So this is the point where these robots are really leaving the lab and going out into the world. 2020, we'll see more robots. 2020, the place that we follow. How about your hands? We'll Can see we see them robots. on the market? Yeah. Mass market? Yeah, we hope so. Where are you based? We're based in London, England. Our colleagues in the, the, the Tele-Robot collaboration are in California. We also work with people in Madrid, in Spain. But we, we work globally. We're used to working all over the place. And SoftBank's Pepper Robot was a French team. Yep. So there's a bunch of robotics happening in Europe. Europe has, a, Europe has the biggest civilian investment, government investment into robotics. The European Commission is putting 100 million euros a year into developing a really wide range of robotics technologies. Did you also, say 100? 100 million euros a year to develop robotics in the EU. Yes, it's huge global invest, huge investment. Lots and lots of things coming out of that. Ranging 100 million is pretty care. good. 100 million is pretty good. But it, they could get into the billions, no? They could Maybe there's a new commission. Maybe they should do that. Well, the, the, the next program in Europe, Horizon Europe. So Horizon 2020 is the, the current European R&D program. The next one will be called Horizon Europe. And they're talking about making huge investments into AI and robotics. And because they see that as the underpinning of the, the next economy. And uh, it would be nice if we can uh, free up, because it's a lot about the robots taking over our jobs, but they should also take over our, our chores. Like uh, when we have to uh, clean or uh, wash dishes and uh, all this stuff. Yeah, robots are very good at doing difficult, dirty, and dangerous, and dull tasks. That's the point. You want to automate the things that we don't need to do, so we can get on with living and doing the things that we want to do. But you're doing like humanizing the robot a little bit. You're like giving it real, human hands kind of we're making the robot have the same abilities as a human the hand is our world is shaped by our hands our world is built around our hands so we're building robot technology that has the same capabilities as a human because we think that's what's necessary to unlock the potential of robotics so i'd like to see some very cheap telepresence robots like the ones we saw but we kind of like usb on the side or something to add arms plug and an hands. arm in plug a hand in plug some legs in exactly this is the kind of market that will evolve. We'll create a market for But the hands are probably robots. the most expensive part, right? Today. Because there's so much complications going on it, in there. It is a hugely complex thing to copy and replicate. Now, there are people who make simpler hands. There are people who have developed yeah. things that are, are good enough. What we're trying to do is to make sure that it's not just good enough, it's we can do everything that's possible. Five fingers is the best invention? Five fingers is what we have. So our world is designed around that. Everything works best everything with five is, fingers? It might work better with six, but today we all have five. All right.